Check out the shape of this landslide that happened last night in my canyon. Man, that's a big cliff. Less than 500 feet from my camp, I have another bend in the canyon that also looks very similar. They both look like horseshoes. Once I noticed the similarity, I couldn't stop thinking about it. What creates these shapes? Are they connected? And the bigger question, should I be worried about sleeping every night next to a possible landslide? When I look at where the landslide happened and then I compare it close to my campsite, they're at very different stages in the process. The question is, how far along is the one that's only 500 feet from my camp? Is it stable for my entire lifetime plus, or is this something I need to worry about for tomorrow? The answer is, I don't know. I'm not a geologist. Today I'm hiking to the collapsed wall to figure out what's actually going on and to learn more about this active geology. Entering these canyons is always a special moment. It's more moist down here, and there's plenty of shade to escape the sun. It's a lot like the lessons that I've learned with trying to establish plants on my terraces. The more I gather water and the more I shade things, the greener the place gets. Unlike all of my hard work, this place exists naturally. For those of you asking about sorghum, I did not plant that. It is courtesy of the birds, so looks like that's going to spread all on its own. I can hardly think of a time when I've come down here without pulling out my plant ID app, like when I stumbled across this rain lily. And it seems almost like a ritual when I see stinging serpent. I have to stop and look. This is one of the few times where I've seen this plant not covered in pollinators. Even though it's very mean to me, it gets that name for a reason. It stings like a nettle. The pollinators love, love, love this plant. Just for context. The reason I say I didn't understand how prevalent clay is, is I'm finding it absolutely everywhere. As I work to build my mega swale, which is Camp Swale 3, it starts near my campsite and runs all the way to my property line. And the key insight there is as soon as you scrape off the first foot of soil, it is pure clay, just like this pocket here. There's some gravel mixed in, but for the most part, it's clay. And with clay, I have my best opportunity to build a desert forest. I'm glad I came over here because I've seen desert hackberry, but only at the bottom of the canyon. I didn't realize this is about half the vegetation. I thought it was all cat claw acacia, but I got to try the berries last month and it was awesome. It's great to know it's not just a freak plant, that there's a lot more of it. This is the cat claw that I thought dominated everything. Please take a second to thank Averon Interactive for sponsoring today's episode. My sponsors are a key part of what makes the Desert Forest possible, and today I'm focused on the rower. I have to be in excellent physical condition to be out on the ranch. When I'm sitting on the bulldozer, it's no big deal, but all the maintenance that goes into that, whether we're lifting tracks, putting on steel pads, I gotta wear my composite toes almost all the time just because we're around the heavy equipment. Whether I'm working on heavy equipment or I'm working in the sun, planting trees, carrying tires, placing mulch, all those things require cardio. The rower is the best thing I've found to keep my cardio up while I'm home here at Fort Worth. 
you can use the rower whether you're in any kind of physical condition, whether you're like my father who is elderly and disabled, or like me, we're middle age trying to stay in good shape, or if you're a young buck getting after it, a rower like this can challenge you at any level of fitness. I'm a little more old school, I'm willing to get on the machine and just get after it, but Averon caters to all sorts of interest levels, so if you're a beginner and you want to join a group class, they got that. If you're intermediate and you want to play a video game style, they got that. Or if you're like me and you just want to turn your brain off for 25-30 minutes and get your cardio in, you can do it that way too. Check out the QR code or scan the link in the description. That'll take you to Averon where you can learn more about the rower and find something that fits your budget. When you order a rower, you're not just keeping yourself in shape, you're also supporting the Dust Ups project that buys trees, that pays for salaries, that pays for fuel, and all the things that go into making Dust Ups a reality. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting my sponsors like Averon, and now, back to the episode. The reason that I keep stopping to look around is that yesterday Daniel had two sightings of mountain lions. The first was right really close to the landslide actually. And the second one was a quarter mile down there where I entered the canyon system. And I should tell you about the second encounter, but uh, Daniel was pretty animated, so I'll let him tell you. Like my heart is running like a million miles an hour right now. That's uh, how many yards away were you from the cat? Uh, me to you when it came out of the scrub brush on the edge of the canyon. Whoa. Yeah, it jumped out like it literally it had to have hurt hear me, but I didn't see it at all. I just walked. I was walking down the canyon and all of a sudden I think just lunged right out and until I shot. I might have hit it, I don't know. I hope not. To be quite honest, I, I hope not. Because I don't want them gone. Yeah. Like I want them here. I just don't want them. Yeah, not, not this close to camp. Here. <laughs> All of a sudden I'm walking and I hear and like it happens so fast that, yeah, I'd rather deal with bad people. So if anybody asks why I carry and what the dangers are, I literally just walked up on a, a mountain lion and they really shouldn't be out right now. No, they really shouldn't. Like they should be in their cave. Like it's too, like I don't know what time it is, but it's too late in the morning. It's 11 in the morning. It's way too late, or allegedly. Like it wasn't a big cat, so it might've been a young one, but either way, it's probably 50 or 60 pounds. Yeah, enough to mess you up. And yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to tangle with it. That scared the crap out of me and cost me probably 15 bucks. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm really mad about. Yeah, 10 millimeters expensive. Yeah. How many rounds did you get off? Uh, I think five. I, I got off five rounds. I, I really hope I didn't hit it. I, I also didn't check. I think it'd be silly to not go look and see if there's blood. I, I agree. So it was in between that Ocotillo? Yes, like it was literally right in here. So I don't know if that's where it lunged because I just happened to hear something and this thing just... Yeah, gone. And I'm sure your memory is not all that reliable with that much adrenaline going. No, 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 no. It, that's why AARs are so important for more than one person to do after action reports. Like when we get in a firefight or something, we have to yeah. cover everything. Knowing that there's an unusual concentration of lions, I have to choose between walking near the clay faces that might collapse on me, or walking near the brush where a mountain lion might ambush me. Pick your poison. I try not to feature firearms too much on dust-ups, but I've known about lions, we've been seeing indications of them more and more. But after that, I don't think you're ever going to see me not armed out here. I wish you could smell the acacia. It's like I'm walking through perfume. And Sneezeweed's doing amazing.
That's it. Man, that's a big cliff. Look at that thing. Geologists call them amphitheaters, and they form through a process called headward erosion. Here's what's happening. Water doesn't erode evenly. It concentrates. When runoff flows over the edge of a cliff, it eats away at the material below, especially with a softer material like the clay that you're seeing on this image. The erosion starts at one point, but it works its way backward, called headward, into the cliff face. And because water naturally spreads out as it falls, you don't get a straight wall. You get this curved amphitheater shape. The center erodes faster than the edges, and over time, horseshoe. And while I love clay for plants, it does have one disadvantage when it comes to landslides. It's nature's lubricant when it gets wet. With all of that material piled up on top, and you add water, which is basically weight, it can't hold the weight anymore. And that's when you get the sudden collapse like I saw last night, a landslide. That is terrifying. That is completely terrifying. Look how much material it is. I guess it makes sense that my very first landslide at Dust Ups was in one of these horseshoes. Where I built my terraces, that's also on a clay pocket, but the clay is quite a bit deeper, and that means that I have to fight really hard to get the trees to even try. Whereas on the Camp Swale 3, where we've moved well over 10,000 yards of material, it's going to be so much easier. In fact, I want to show you this Siberian elm. Believe it or not, these are Siberian elm that I planted from seed. It's not exactly thriving, but I've literally done nothing to help it. There's no manure, there's no soil amendments, I didn't even give it mulch, I just wanted to see how it would do. But now that I've seen it hang on, I'm going to give it some love. With clay, I have moisture available from the first moment of life when a tree germinates as its taproot, because most of the trees out here do have taproots, as they dive down, they're just gonna keep finding more and more and more moisture. Daniel caught this footage of water flowing into the canyon right by camp. The best thing I can do, because this is a manageable flow of water, is to divert the water out of that canyon in a shallow area, and that is exactly what we're gonna do. The next swale system we're building is in a shallow part of the canyon before everything gets momentum. I'm going to route that water across my parking lot and down into Dove Alley where I'm building fields based on some reading that I did in Bill Mollison's Permaculture Design Manual and specifically the chapter on drylands. Thank you to those of you who left the comment putting me onto that book. It's going to make the design a whole lot better and we're going to add a dramatic amount of water just below the campsite, which is obviously good for plants. It furthers the desert forest mission, but also for this episode, I can rest easy knowing that the erosion on this canyon is gonna stop as soon as I take most of the water out of the equation. By starting the swale here around the parking lot, we're gonna be able to direct the water away from camp. And as we walk this way, we're staying roughly on contour. We keep going this way, and what's happening is the canyon's down there, but as I walk this way, I'm gonna walk into this narrow spot over here, so that by the time this contour line is anywhere close to the canyon, this is a wash at this point, using the bulldozer to make a tiny little dam and direct the water out of this arroyo. That's not hard. The alternative is what's been happening where all this water flushes right down this hill. You can get a sense for how much water there is and how steep it is. It's better if the water doesn't show up here in the first place. 
If you want to see cool stuff like this as it happens, Team Dust Ups is the place to find real-time updates and your subscription in addition to getting you live access and connecting you with the community. It helps make all of this possible.